Hi everyone and welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim tutorial. If you're new to the channel, I'm a 737 captain for a European airline based in the UK and this channel is all about creating fun content for you to enhance your flight sim experience. In today's video, I'll be demonstrating how to use the radio in the Boeing 737 Use the, the excellent Zebo Mod 737 in X-Plane 12. So, let's jump on in. So here we are in the cockpit of the Zebo Mod 737. Let's have a little look at the pedestal. It's worth mentioning briefly, we're currently in London Heathrow, we're live on the Vatsim network, so we do have some air traffic control to help demonstrate how the radio works. And we're not going to do any other full setup, as I said, it's just concentrating on the radio today. Specifically, the radio tuning panel and the audio control panel located on the pedestal for the captain's side, uh, who's typically going to be pilot flying when you're flying on your virtual network. So, starting right at the top here, here is the radio tuning panel of the Boeing 737 here. You can simply, as like with most radios, tune in the frequency you want to tune to uh, on the standby window and then, then push the uh, transfer switch to make that the active frequency and then you can transmit to ATC. Now slightly below that you have the ability to select different radios. Uh, so if I select VHF2 you'll see a little white light appear here and over here as well. That's the offside tuning light that tells whoever's looking at the radio that this radio is being controlled elsewhere. So for example if we look here on the uh, VHF1 I can change the, change the frequency and change it on VHF2. This is very rarely used. It's quite useful if you have a safety pilot who wants to control the radio, so he can select VHF1. There's the upside tuning light here and here. And look, I can manipulate the radio uh, down there. Uh, oops, I think it's just... Oh, X-Plane 12 is doing its funny camera business. Uh, 119.5, 119.5. You can see, look, if I change it, 120.5, 120.5. So that's uh, quite useful with that regard. But again, it's seldom used. We leave that VHF3 with data here so we can get CPDLC information. So that's pretty much the radio tuning panel. You can turn the panel off. You can test it to increase its range to pick up say the ATIS if there's a poor weak, or weak reception but very rarely used here. Let's move on to the audio control panel. So here is the audio control panel. You'll see all the receiver switches are here. Now this allows us to receive uh, information from different frequencies. It's a push button so if you push it in you'll see it goes white and if you push it out it'll uh, go dim and you can control the volume directly by rotating this switch. It all works flawlessly in the Zebo Mod 737 in X-Plane 12. Now you can see here we have on standby the frequency 118.5 which on the Vatsim network today is Heathrow Tower. So let's tune that in and turn this on and turn up the volume. Hopefully, if we're lucky, because it is quite busy here, we'll hear Good some ATC. Tower, there we are. We have and you can see how I control the volume using that by just simply rotating the knob. So uh, I can turn it up. And turn it down. And that's actual people on the VATSIP network hearing if you're new to air uh, flight simming. It's pretty cool. Um, so if I deselect that, you'll notice you can still hear the radio. The reason is the mic selector is active here on box one. If I was to select box two, or box three or something yeah, else, yeah, like yeah. flight, you'll see the radio cuts out. But if I turn on the receiver, you can hear uh, someone talking. DME That's because and the right mic selector, on. regardless of the position of the receiver switch, always turns on the volume here. So that means you can have an active frequency and tune in on other frequencies and monitor them. And then you simply select the mic selector, what you want to uh, select to whoever you want to talk to. So you can hear that um, we're tuned to the tower uh, with the mic selector on and the radio tuning panel turned as well. So we'll turn that down here for a second and you'll notice on box 2 is a frequency here, 128.075. That is the Heathrow Atis. So what I can do is whilst active on VHF1 with the tower, I can turn this receiving uh, receiver on and turn it up Arrival, runway zero, and you can hear the 80s and nine, typically right. this is a, well, say typically, this is a two pilots zero. aircraft so um, you wouldn't want to be on the radio whilst listening to the 80s so pilot monitoring would typically uh, get the 80s and tune in himself but I'm just showing you how you can use the volume receiver uh, and selector uh, to also get the uh, 80s again look if I select this it turns on the receiver regardless of the position of the receiver switch as well 
So the other buttons on the mic selector, VHF1, VHF2, VHF3 if required. These are not modelled, these buttons here. I'm just trying to think what they are in the real aircraft, but I cannot remember. Um, flight here is the intercom, so you can talk to anyone on the intercom, be it your colleague uh, or someone on the ground. But again, this is seldom used because this switch here, which is the uh, push to talk switch, it's uh, latched to the intercom position. So if you move this to intercom, it's the same as transmitting on flight. So it has an open mic to talk to your colleague or the ground crew so very rarely use the flight button on the mic selector uh, services for cabin crew and PA is for the public announcement to the passengers in the back again we very rarely use the mic selector we use a hand mic on the rear of the pedestal because you don't want to have this accidentally selected and then try and talk to ADC and you end up talking to the passengers in the rear so on the bottom of the audio control panel, I briefly did discuss it, but here is the RT IC switch or the push to talk switch that is uh, spring loaded to RT to talk to ATC on the mic selector. Again, we very rarely use this. We use the button on the rear of the control column and it's either that or latched to the intercom position as well, which is the same as the flight button as well. We in flight leave it in the intercom position so you can talk to your colleague. Uh, here is the filter switch. I've never used this in the real 737 allows you I believe to pick up Morse code uh, for nav aid idents in a, in a clearer way it cuts out voice noises as well but I've never ever used it uh, in the real aircraft and lastly this switch here alternate and normal the alternate allows you to use the radio in a degraded mode so then ladies and gentlemen that's the end of the radio tutorial for the Boeing 737 using the Zebo Mod 737 in X-Plane 12 I hope you found that interesting perhaps learn something new perhaps try using it on your next virtual flight on your preferred virtual network if you really enjoyed the video don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and if you'd like to stay up to date with the latest content don't forget to subscribe as well stay safe out there and i'll see you on another live stream or tutorial very soon bye bye from me